Hello, my name is Mohamed al uh, I'll be talking about demystifying, you know, quantum theory using computational say. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed al -Rami. I'm with the Wolfram Document and Media System. Uh, I'm also a lecturer at the Cal State LA, uh, teaching chemistry, uh, quantum chemistry, thermodynamic, upper level and lower level courses. Today I'll be talking about using computational essays to demystify quantum mechanics. So uh, basically, you know, quantum theory is the most successful theoretical theory that has been developed so far. However, at the foundation of quantum theory, there are lots of lots of open problems, and the most famous one is the measurement problem. Quantum theory, the most successful theory developed by humankind, but it doesn't explain the measurement process. Basically, the measurement process appears as a postulate in quantum theory. And since from the very beginning, you know, the founding fathers, among them Einstein, Schrodinger, uh, Dubroy, they were not happy about that. However, because of the Copenhagen School for the like about, I would say, 50 years, physicists, they somehow ignore this foundational problem. But about 60s, 70s, you know, works of David Bohm, John Bell, you know, physicists start thinking about the foundational problems. And what are the approaches that we could tackle this problem? Now we have a zoo of different interpretations. I would say at least, you know, 50 popular interpretations of the quantum theory. However, today I'm not going to talk about different interpretations. I'm going to talk about some alternative quantum theories. So basically we have different mathematical models for the quantum theory. They may provide different predictions. Therefore, we could test them in an experiment. We would either falsify those theories or we would falsify quantum mechanics. In particular, I'll talk about two of them, the most popular ones. One of them is called Bohm theory or pilot wave theory or Dubroy Bohm theory. The other one is collapse model. So let me start with the Bohm theory. What is a Bohm theory? Basically, you know, in Bohm theory, we have a very important message from the very beginning. Whenever you talk about particles, mean it. Particle has a well-defined trajectory. Therefore, write down a mathematical equation describing that well-defined trajectory. Therefore, here, we have a deterministic motion of particles. This deterministic motion has two mathematical equations. So in this model, we have two mathematical equations. One of them is Schrodinger equation. The other one is a different mathematical equation, is a new mathematical equation. Second, we know that at the quantum level, we have probabilities. How we can explain those probabilities, the connection between Bohmian mechanic, this new alternative theory, and probabilities this description is very similar to the connection of, for example, classical mechanic and a statistical mechanic. So we go from a deterministic theory to a probabilistic description following Boltzmann approach. Now, in order to derive the probabilities, I should talk about a very important concept which is called typicality. So basically, there are possibilities for deviation from a standard behavior, from the usual behavior, but whenever we talk about probabilities, we are talking about typical behavior. We would say that most particles, they would behave like that. That's how we would do reasoning within a deterministic theory. So the fundamental concept to do a probabilistic description within a deterministic theory is typicality. And in Bohmian mechanic, it is based on some physicists that would call it postulate. Some physicists, they can explain it. That, let me call it postulate, that assumption is called quantum equilibrium. What is the quantum equilibrium? It tells you that for an ensemble of identical particles, all of them having the same function, the empirical distribution is approximately equal to the modulus square of the wave function. So this is a very important assumption in Bohmian mechanics. But again, let me go back to the original idea in brief. Two mathematical equations and one probabilistic reasoning, going from a deterministic theory to a probabilistic description. Now let me show you the equations of motion. So, the second equation of motion is Schrodinger equation. We all know the Schrodinger equation. The first one is the new equation in Bohmian mechanics. 
is represent the trajectory of particle depending on wave function. You see, we have a very strange mathematical formula here, imaginary of like a bunch of other terms. So this is the new equation in Bohmian mechanics. As you can see, the trajectory of particles depends on the wave function. That's why you know it is called guiding wave or pilot wave. So two mathematical equations, one for trajectory, one for the Schrodinger equation. Now let's see how Wolfram can help us with understanding of Bohmian mechanics. So, you know, the biggest challenge, if you open any textbook about Bohmian mechanics, you will see only one famous example, free evolution, a Gaussian evolving in free space and time. Why? Because that's the one with analytical solution. And for some reason, I don't know why physicists or those who wrote those books, they are not interested in doing numerical calculation. You know why? Because then you have to go through all these steps telling your students how we should do the numerical calculation within, for example, Schrodinger equation. But with the Wolfram language, you can easily do that. So for example, let us start with the Gaussian and then let us consider a potential like this. So we have a potential barrier and let us consider a very strange condition when the initial kinetic energy is less than the height barrier, basically according to the classical mechanic, the particle can not go through this uh, potential barrier, so the famous phenomenon of quantum tunneling. And what we do here is a very simple, let me just show you the final answer, numerical evaluation of the wave function. So we start with this wave function, actually it's the modulus the square of a wave function, so we, here we have the probability distribution. And then when it reaches the Height barriers, as you can see, a reflection happens, and then look at this part. A tiny portion of, let me just magnify that, a tiny portion of the wave function can pass through the height barrier. This is a completely non-classical feature. And I obtained this result using numerical simulation using built-in function of mathematical. You know, this is a very simple example, but you cannot find it in any textbook. Because you cannot explain numerical simulation in any textbook. It will take like one chapter of describing, you have to discretize the space and time and use this approximation, use this method to get this one, and then that's how you can simulate the wave function, and that's the result. But you know, within like a few lines, we can see the result. And why the tunneling is a very interesting phenomenon, because Look at this part. Here, we have quantum tunneling, but look at the other side. I guess that looks familiar. It's like an interference pattern. Actually, it is an interference between one side of the wave function and the reflected side. So within one example, we have two quantum mysteries. Let's call them quantum mysteries. Tunneling and interference together. So it's an ideal example for the students who are interested in the quantum foundation. You can tell them, look, it's a quantum tunneling, but instead of a simple tunneling, we have interference. Look at the right side. Let me show you a nice interference pattern, you see. We have an interference pattern, and on the other side, we have quantum tunneling. So both phenomena together. Why we can study these two phenomena together? Because I'm using numerical simulation with Wolfram. And immediately, I can find Bohmian trajectories. Again, you know, it's a new, I'm not going through the detail, it's a numerical you know, solution of a differential equation, and that's the Bohmian trajectories. As you can see, you know, the gray area is the area that the wave function is non-zero, the, the other area, this area, is where we have our potential barrier. As you can see, most particles reflection, and there are a few possibilities Particles, they can go through the wave function. They, they, they can go through the height barrier. And let me show you the correspondence with the modulus square of the wave function, the probability density. Here, as you can see, I plotted the density of the wave function in the background and then quantum trajectories. And as you can see, the quantum trajectory follows the location where the modulus square of the wave function probability has the maximum values. And also, let me show you the 
non-classical feature of Bohmian theory, which is, let me just show you the last picture, which is the quantum potential, the strange feature that we have in Bohmian mechanic, which is responsible for the non-locality in Bohmian mechanic. As you can see, we have some flat regions, and then we have some valleys. And those blue trajectories, they represent the Bohmian trajectories. As you can see, the Bohmian trajectory, the particles, they prefer the flat regions, and they avoid the valleys. Okay, so we obtain somehow a classical description of you know, particle behavior using an alternative quantum theory, and all the parameters are like, you know, we could manipulate them. We could change the potential barrier. We could change the initial mass. We could do whatever we want in less than 10 minutes, five minutes. The student can see quantum interference, quantum tunneling, everything describing an alternative quantum theory. Any questions so far? That's one way of seeing that, but you know, like, you know, it's like, if you tell me like, you know, can I also test it experimentally? I would say it's, it's not clear, like, you know, if that interpretation of those trajectories are correct, but we can say that, you know, it's, I didn't talk about like, you know, let me talk about another concept. If, you know, some textbook, they call it, let me just show you the equation uh, here. So you see this is, we have a velocity field and the particles, the trajectories, the probability flux is basically following that velocity field. That's one way of seeing, you know, those trajectories, which is some. Mm-hmm. Any other question? Again, remember that in Bohmian, in Bohmian mechanic, the strange feature, the new feature, is the quantum potential that I showed you. So this is the quantum potential for a quantum tunneling. And remember that the particles, they prefer the flat regions. They would like to avoid the valleys. Somehow the quantum potential is responsible for a strange quantum force. The particles, they can tunnel through the uh, height barrier. So that's one alternative quantum theory. So basically, you know, in a standard textbook in Bohmian mechanic, it would be about, I would say, at least 150 pages. Because they'll talk about, like, you know, the different interpretation, they'll talk about, like, you know, what is the Bohmian mechanic, then they'll talk about, like, you know, how we could simulate these results, and then they'll go about, you know, discretization, numerical calculation. At the end, the students, they would say, okay, so tell me, what is the physics behind that? That's the physics behind that, this picture. We have a bunch of trajectories. It reproduces the quantum probabilities. And we have a new feature. That new feature is basically a new quantum potential. And remember that it's a hidden variable theory. And this quantum potential is 100% non-local. It's a non-local deterministic theory. Now. So the observable here, you know, at the end of the day, what we observe are some positions, right? You know, you have a detector plate here, and you just observe a bunch of points. So the observables is the final point. You cannot observe that trajectory, because if you want to observe that trajectory, we know that you would kill this quantum phenomenon. It would be a different quantum phenomenon. You would kill the quant. That's one way of interpreting that. In other words, you know, I would like to use Bohr terminology. You cannot break down a quantum phenomena into simpler steps, because if you do that, it would be a new quantum phenomena. So for this quantum phenomena, remember that those. That's why it is called hidden variable theory. The positions are somehow hidden. These are the new variables that are hidden in the standard quantum theory. Now let me talk about another alternative quantum theory which follows a totally different approach. So this approach, it takes the measurement much more seriously. So in Bohmian mechanics, we would say that, look, you know, there is no collapse of the wave function. 
But here we would say that yes, there is a collapse. The collapse is random. Let's find a dynamical equation describing the collapse. So let's see what are the fundamental assumptions in collapse models. So in collapse models, we would say, okay, I would like to describe a collapse a collapse using a dynamical equation, therefore I have to modify the Schrodinger equation. That's one fundamental assumption. The second fundamental assumption is that, look, you know, at the end I know that the probabilities, they should follow the quantum probabilities. So we would start with these two fundamental assumptions describing the collapse through a dynamical equation, not an approximate, not a postulate, so we are not postulating the collapse of the wave function, we are describing the collapse of the wave function. But we would say that, look, remember that the collapse should follow quantum probabilities. And using these two assumptions, we would modify quantum theory by guessing the best possible alternatives. So it's a phenomenological modification of quantum theory. Why it is interesting? Because you can go to the experiment and you can test it. You can say that, okay, if it's right, it tells me that at this mass scale, I should see this deviation from a standard quantum theory. Either you would falsify or you would verify these theories. Now, let me show you a simple example. What is collapse dynamic? The best example that I found in the literature is called gambler's ruin game. So what is this game? I have like let's say 10 pennies, you have 90 pennies, and we start you know, throwing a coin. Head, you will give me one penny, tail, I'll give you one penny. And we keep playing until one of us wins or lose, the other one would lose. So it's a random process. At the beginning, you have, let's say I have 10 pennies, you have 90, and at the end one of us zero, the other one 100. If we repeat this game many times, the probability of winning or losing is proportional to the initial stack. Let me show you a simple simulation. For example, let's say that you know you we would start with like for example, me as a player, I put uh, 23 pennies and we start playing that. And what you see here is the probability of me winning that game after repeating that game 31 times. And if I increase the number of times that we play that game, you see, the probability of winning approaches my initial stack. So if I put 23 pennies, the probability of me winning is 23%. Let's run it one more time. For example, let's say that I put initially, instead of 23 pennies, I'll put 55. And we run it again. So one time I may win, I may lose. As we keep playing, for example, 100 times, 200 times, you see the probability of me winning approaches my initial stack. In other words, if I put down more money, I can increase the prob probability of winning. So it's a very simple game that we have in, you know, if you talk with any gambler, they would explain you, yes, more money, you could increase the probability of winning. Now, the same thing in collapse models. So we have two initial probabilities. We have two different, you know, superpositions. I'm considering the simplest case. The simplest case is a two-dimensional Hilbert space. So we have two terms, initial bet is equal to the initial probability, modulus the square of each superposition term. What is the probability of like, you know, winning or losing is proportional to the initial stack. What is the dynamic? The dynamic follows a random process. It's a 100% random process. What is that noise? What is the nature of that noise? We don't know. It can be because of gravity, it can be a new force in nature, but it's just a guess. You know, we would say that let's develop a mathematical model describing the collapse of the wave function. And if you simulate these two strange mathematical equations using random processes, let me just show you this, because we don't have that much time. Let me just show you the histogram of results. So this is the initial case. At time zero, we are 60% sure that the state is one. And as time 
goes by. You see, initially there are many possibilities because you could get many different results, but after a large enough time, let me just increase the time. There are only two possibilities. Either you win or you lose. What is the probability of winning or losing? It is proportional to your initial bet. Let's see it one more time. Initially, so I put down 60%, one term in the quantum superposition. As the time goes by, we have a collection of different results. One time we may say, let's say that it's like a spin, up or down, up or down, up or no, down. But if you let the collapse mechanism to evolve for large enough time, you will get only two possibilities. The probability becomes either one or zero. This is the collapse of the wave function. After a while, you are 100% sure that the state is either up or down. So here we have a 100% random process. Again, what is that randomness? What is the nature of that randomness? We don't know. But we somehow include that randomness in the dynamical equation. It's not a postulate anymore. We have a mathematical equation describing that you know, dynamical equation. Let me show you a different graph. Because of your faces, I can say that you are not very happy with my explanation. So, <laughs> for example, let us consider two realization. Like, you know, we measure spin two times. Okay, so this is the random evolution of the probability density. So we start from, I set it to 0.5, half, half chance. In one run of experiments, you see we have a strange stochastic movement, but at the end, we end up with zero. In the other run, stochastic movement, and we ended up in one. So let's run it four times. So for the four times, two of them, we ended up with one, Two of them, we ended up with zero. And if I keep increasing the number of realization, at the end, I can get a histogram of the results, which is what I showed you here. So you see, at the end, there are only two possibilities. There are two possible endpoints. It's either one and zero. So as you can see here, for a large enough time, starting from an initial value, we randomly ended up either in one or in zero. We provide a dynamical description of the collapse. These models are called collapse models. Sometimes they're also called spontaneous collapse models. Okay, that's at the end, you know, I would like to thank a couple of people who helped me being here Stephen being, you know, a big inspiration for all of us. Sweet, Vitaly, Carl, they helped me with the administration. Paul, you know, he helped me with the Bohmian mechanic. David, he was my instructor. Andre, Daniel, again with the administration. And Phil from Hamilton College, New York City, he helped me with the collapse models. And if you're interested in the reference, I would recommend you these two books. You can download them for free from the internet. The first one is about Bohmian mechanics. The second one is about collapse models. Thank you. A new term is random. And it's not, you know, the overall Hamiltonian is not Hermitian anymore. So it's like, yeah, you don't need to have, you know, Hermitian, you know, Hamiltonian, but the price that you ha have to pay for that is that change your probability rule. Because the norm of the wave function will decrease in time. I think that's the update. 
you have to update it. That's why, you know, some people, they call these models as like a Bayesian approach because at each step, you have, you're losing some information, therefore you have to update the norm of the wave function. Uh -huh. Oh, then, then it's... No, okay, let me answer your question like this. So I'm not... Ch uh, for example, let me just give you one example. You know, there are some gravity models that the... Uh, how do they call it? They call it non-standard... Uh, what's the technical term for that? Basically, you know, for the metric of the space and time, the metric is not real anymore. The metric can be imaginary. And that imaginary term is the interaction between gravity and one of your system's operator. That system operator is usually mass density operator. So that is the meaning of that nonlinear term that we added to the Hamiltonian. By the way, one comment. This is not the only way that you can write down that dynamical equation. Another dynamical equation for the collapse model is 100% equal to what we call as continuous measurement, continuous weak measurement. So you could, if you don't like this dynamical equation, you have to add lots of other terms to preserve the norm of the wave function. But here is the simplest form. I wonder if I answer your question. We could discuss later. Any other question? Actually, we are running out of time. Okay, thanks a lot for your attendance.